Hey everybody, you're just in time for What's Hot, where we talk about the stories that have us all talking. We are joined today by local blogger Rochelle Fritsch and Jeff Wagner back with us. The state has a drinking problem. According to Health First Wisconsin, nationally binge drinking is defined as four to five drinks. But in Wisconsin, that number jumps to nine. It appears to be starting on college campuses. At UW-Madison, police are finding students passed out nude covered in their own feces in need of an ER is binge drinking out of control. If I can jump in really quickly, just by the virtue of us saying binge drinking, that already means that it's out of control. So is it out of control, out of control? It's definitely out of control um, and it is a statewide problem. And I would even hazard to say it's not starting on college campuses, you know, it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing because the campus wants parents to start being involved and having conversations with their kids about drinking. But if those parents don't have an idea of what safe drinking is, if those parents aren't modeling, the conversation's going to be more like, well, you're probably going to be experimenting with alcohol. Just make sure you're with a buddy because things might happen. Mm -hmm. Or get a drunk driver, or I'm sorry, get a designated driver. When you can clearly see that a lot of these incidences that kids are having have nothing to do with driving at all. So we got to make sure we're having the right kinds of conversations. See, here, here's how I look at this. First of all, I, I don't know, is, is it out of control yet? Is this a surprise? I mean, I think you could have probably done the same story, you know, mm -hmm. 30 years ago at UW-Madison and pretty much come up with the same analysis. Here's one of my controversial takes on this, and I admit it's controversial. I, I think... I think we should lower the drinking age back to 18, which it was when, when I turned 18, in part because I think some of the thing that leads to these binge drinking is the fact that you got college kids that are going to drink, but they can't legally go into bars. So what you do is you see them going into these house parties, this other stuff, you pay the $5, you get the red solo cup, and you can drink as much as you want. I think if it were a little more mainstream, if you had the bars, the nightclubs, there might be some more controls on it. Well, Just uh, I mean, if you look at Europe's attitude, it's not a forbidden thing. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, it's there, so it's not this huge deal. And I'm not sure that kids then get to an age and go overboard. But to Jeff's argument, in Wisconsin, parents can give their kids alcohol uh -huh. yeah. at an earlier age. Right. which is very European, and we've got the problem really bad here well, in Wisconsin. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it is, but I think, too, Rochelle, to your point about mm -hmm. it not starting in college, I think a lot of these kids are doing it in high school. It's mm -hmm. just well, easier in college because you don't have to go home but, and but your parents aren't there. I think what's happening is they're modeling what their parents are doing, and, and the crux of the thing is that people are now going up to nine drinks. So what happens when these kids have kids of their own and they're going to be like, you know what, oh, it's not a big deal. Nine drinks didn't kill me. Well, it might help, you know, happen to my friend, but yeah. that's rare. Mm -hmm. We've got to start doing something about the culture in of itself. All right, out of time on Topic One. Coming up next, we reveal the viewer's choice topic of the day. And Brian Goddard has a look at the holiday forecast. Our viewer's choice topic of the day. Again, we're joined by Rochelle Fritch and Jeff Wagner from 620 WTMJ. Rochelle, before Topic Two, favorite Thanksgiving side dish, go. Dressing. All right, yeah. another stuffing camp there. During the winter season, it is common for people to <laughs> warm up their cars while they continue to get ready for work or school. But officers in New York are ticketing people caught leaving their car unattended with the keys inside. Officers say you run the risk of getting your car stolen. Should this be a ticketable offense? Nope, and they do it in Wisconsin and some communities here too. Nope, mm -hmm. it, to me, if, if you've got such a problem that you've got people who are stealing cars, go after the car thieves. This is like saying, gee, you didn't bolt your windows and somebody broke in. Sorry, I don't agree with this at all. Well, my thing is, is that if you're taking the risk and you get your car stolen, then uh, that's your punishment. I don't think you ticket the people to cho that choose to take this risk. But, but, but here's, here's the other side of the, the coin, though. Aren't you going to be calling the police yeah. to, to come in and take care of your problem because you left your keys in your car with it running? Okay, so let, let, all right, let's work with that. Let's say that uh, during the summer you leave your garage door open and somebody comes in through the garage door, burglarizes your house. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that uh, it's your fault because you left your garage door open? I think it's a little bit different than putting your keys in your car and you know somebody's going to drive off with your car. No, I don't know. I, I do. What about what about what about if you've locked the car? See, a lot of people do that, and in this particular case, they ticketed the woman. She had they the have keys those in the automatic car. car starters. What, yeah, she but had the keys and they'll in the give car. you a go for that. Okay, they, she had the keys in the car, but she also had the 
and the car was running, but she also had the lock thing. So it was locked and running, and they still gave her a ticket. I'm sorry. I, I think if, if that's the way it is, if you're involving the police, and to me, you're kind of setting yourself up. It's something you're doing intentionally as opposed to unintentionally leaving your garage door open or But I don't think it's unlocked. going to deter people because they're probably like, all right, I paid the ticket. It's not going to happen again. You know, I'm out of time. I need to warm up the car. I think they're still going to do it. And see, then well, when sure. the car gets stolen, they're yeah. still going to call police. See, to me, this yeah. is victimizing the victim. <laughs> okay, your, your car is stolen, and then they're going to give you a ticket. All yeah. right, lightning round time now. A dad makes a playful video called How to Fight a Baby. It shows him tossing his infant a short distance onto the bed, pretending to grapple with him. But this video is sparking a lot of debate. Is it playful parenting or does this cross Kid the line? Kid seems to love it. <laughs> I, I love My this. son loves, <laughs> loves to rough house. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. With his father. This is, this is. <laughs> the kid's and, then they, and then they show the kid beating up the dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's parental abuse. I, you know, I, I, t I tell you, you know, we've got way too much time on our hands. Here you have a parent who's playing around with the kid. He's not hurting him. There's one scene where he kind of puts his hand around the kid's throat. And he he pretends like chokes him. And the thing I was looking at, some people are just appalled by this. Mm -hmm. Come on. He's playing around with the child. They're playing wrestling. Give me a break. I just, I absolutely loved it. It made me giggle and think back to the time when my daughter was that age and I could tickle her and she wasn't. 11. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's adorable. Uh, the only problem that could happen is you have somebody who's not being smart and decides to try it on their own and doesn't set up pillows. Or yeah. Right, it doesn't support the baby. Yeah. Or, and right. you know, right. the positive is, is this, this guy is obviously a present father. Exactly. He is there. Exactly. He's interacting with his child. Hey, hey, my brother and I used to do the same thing until he got big enough so that he could take care of me. Then we stopped <laughs> that, you know. <laughs> It was fine when I was the bigger one. Right, I mean, siblings do it to each yeah, other all the thing. time. Jeff, I've got you on the record as a stuffing fan. I'm a That's stuffing fan, stuffing absolutely. Fan? Okay, so Are you this keeping is... some kind of tally? Yeah. Spreadsheet Steve, or something? Mike Steve. Jacobs likes green bean casserole. Are you differentiating between dressing and stuffing? No. It's all the same. Is there a difference? Dressing and stuffing is the same. Yeah. Stuffing One's inside. in the casserole, one's in the bird. It's the same ingredients. My mom always does some in the bird and some outside the bird, so you can kind of pick, but it's the same I do it. I do it outside the bird, and then I put the, some of the drippings on the stuffing, so it fakes it. You guys are I'm making dressing. me hungry. Happy I know, Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> hey, the What's Hot discussion continues online. Find that and my stuffing recipe at tmj4.com/slash/hot. Not really, no. Coming up, storm forecaster.